Ken Lowe, and this is a little video about how we set valve springs by pressure and not by installed height. Setting them by installed height presumes that all springs at a particular dimension will have the same pressure, and that's manifestly not the case. So we've written a procedure here with about uh, 20 different steps on how to do it. And this procedure's written up and we'll go through it step by step. First step is to disassemble, clean the cylinder heads. The second step is to lap the valves if necessary, which is always a good idea. Now, now we're going to start gathering the information. Well, the first thing we look for is the total valve lift information. That's abbreviated as TVL. Now, if you look on these charts, and we'll get somebody to get the cameraman here to zoom in on this. If you have a look at this chart, here's where all the information goes. And you start gathering the information because sometimes you're going to be adding and subtracting certain numbers in here to create the chart. Now, what this does is the value of this chart is it gives you exactly what pressure each one of your springs are set at even to the point where we have a column down here that says the OHT number which is on the head test which we actually check it with a uh, different set of uh, tester with a different spring tester so uh, we can tell which would probably read different than this is not as accurate as this is as this spring tester right here is and by doing that we can see at the racetrack we can have a quick between the rounds check to see if the spring's gone off and if the spring has gone off uh, we can know how much it has gone off and we have numbers on here uh, such as the um, uh, uh, the maximum amount of shim that can go in, the amount of shim that's currently in there and the, um, uh, uh, the uh, a, a little thing called the STG uh, space that's shim to go space, that's how much more shims we can put in there uh, probably I'll hold it up straight. You have it twisted around sideways. No, so oh, sorry. <laughs> Cameraman's better than I am. Anyway, um, but we're back up here at total valve lift. Okay, TVL. Well, that's the first thing we got to know is, is we got to know how far the valve is going to open. Um, and every camshaft is different. Obviously, you set your cylinder heads up with the valve springs to go with that particular camshaft. <coughs> Excuse me. Uh, now, so you put the total valve lift in, which is step number three. You don't mind if I put my glasses on so I can see some of this stuff. Now, um, if you uh, only know camshaft lift, then you have to calculate your total valve lift based on what your rocker ratio is. Um, now, the next dimension that you got to find is you got to find the coil bind dimension. Now, if all your springs are new, we suggest putting them in a vise, taking them to coil bind, release them once. Now, what that does is that takes the initial loss out of the spring. What happens is, is all springs will have a little bit of initial loss. Um, and so what we'll do is we, now these springs we just did right here. See, if you pan around, see, we just did a set of heads here. The cameraman, Mr. Winty, and I, we uh, did these together. Actually, he did most of it. Yeah. Yeah. Don't, don't pan too fast. People can't see. Anyway, uh, now we're going to verify the coil bind dimension. How we do that? There's a picture here that shows how to do it. But basically, you do it without the retainer. And how I do it is I just take it and I put it in a vise with a set of soft jaws. Open up my pair of dial calipers. Put them in there like that, and as it closes, the dial caliper winds down. It'll never read a bigger number than the spring coil bind. We back that out. We don't need to take the loss out of these springs. These springs already got 897 runs on them, and they're still in good condition. One of the advantages of running a little camshaft. Now, this dimension right here. We take that dimension, which is coil bind dimension, we add 30 thousandths to it, 0 .030. That's the minimum installed height that we want to use. Okay, so the CBD is, like we said, the actual coil bind plus 30 thou. Now, 
But that gives us two very valuable pieces of information. Now we log all this information on this chart. And so we have total valve and then we have the coil bind dimension. Okay. Then we can go up here and the next thing we do is we measure the retainers for this dimension right here. And this is only used in the in the spring testing application. Okay. So that right there comes up to that dimension. Because what happens is you need to check the springs with the retainers. Because as you can see, the retainer has a step on it right there which means that it pushes down on the inner spring more than it pushes down on the outer spring. So therefore, if you're going to check the spring pressure, it's got to be done with the retainer. But the problem is, the retainer dimension is, uh, it changes, the, uh, it, it doesn't represent what's called the installed height. Now, that's the next thing we've got to do, okay? We log all the, the B dimensions, which is the uh, retainer dimension. Also, log, if you have cups in your head, you have to log your cup dimensions as well. We don't have cups on this head, so we don't do it. Now, the A dimension is um, the dimension from the bottom of the valve seat to the bottom, sorry, the top of the valve spring seat to the bottom of the valve retainer. And that's e e most easily done with a height mic. We've got a little height mic right here. And if the operator, if Winty wants to swing over here, we'll throw a valve in and just check it. Okay. And what we'll do is we take this valve and we put this valve in the uh, the valve guide. Is it pops up like that? And then oh, we don't put a spring on. We wind the height mic together. Put that on there. Put the height mic on. The retainer on. Put a, put a set of keepers on. Uh, didn't wind it down far enough. There you go. Now, we wind the uh, height mic out like this. There you go. And that measures from the bottom of the spring seat to the bottom of the uh, valve retainer. Now, this dimension right there would be one inch uh, 870 thou. See? 1 inch 870 thou. As you go down through here, you can see there's 9, uh, 6, 7, 8. You can't see the 9, so it's got to be a 7 there. 70. Alright, then you write that number down in the height mic, in the A position. Okay? And you already got the retainer number. Now what you do is you come up with those two numbers right there and that's your C number, that's your overall. Now that comes into the calibration, I'll show you what the calibration is all about in just a second. Let me go ahead and take this apart. It only takes a few minutes to go through and check all your, check all your valves for height. Now these heads are done and ready to go together. Uh, Mr. Winty finished those while I was out taking mom home. Now, if you zoom in here and have a look, okay, what happens is we've got that dimension. Now, it tells us in this instructions here, to find the C dimension, you add the A and the B to get C. You see right there, 1.892 equals 